Well, unfortunately, the dumbed-down public thinks that the shadow government is nothing more than something you would see in a James Bond movie. They don't even know that it exists, Mr. Scott. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, that's just the reality. You well, I think they see more and more they did. What happened in Pittsburgh, for example, that's... That's not the American way of doing things, you know. You have a small group of peaceful protesters, and these companies have these brand new weapons they want to try out, and uh, and uh, you know, members of the press getting arrested. Uh, no, I can't say arrested, detained. He was not booked, right? Yeah, no, no, not booked at all. Just detained. Um, <laughs> So that they can see that things are changing. Absolutely. All right, final segment coming up with Peter Dale Scott, one of the great minds of our time, folks. I can guarantee that his work will go down in history, author of The War Conspiracy and much more. It's The Alex Jones Show. I am Jason Burma sitting in. We'll be back after this. Infowars.com, prisonplanet.tv. This is Alex Jones. Have you heard of the millionaire patriot? Well, you should. He has a free handgun and five days of firearms training waiting for you. That's right. You can attend five days of world-class gun training at Front Sight Firearms Training Institute and secure a 30-state concealed weapons permit, all for pennies on the dollar. Plus, if you act fast, the Millionaire Patriot will give you a free Springfield Armory XD pistol in the caliber of your choice. I believe now is the time that you and your family need to be armed and trained to levels that exceed law enforcement and military standards. Front Sight provides such training without any boot camp mentality or drill instructor attitudes. This is real. Don't miss out. Secure a Front Sight defensive handgun course plus a 30-state concealed weapons permit for pennies on the dollar and get your free handgun. Go to FrontSight.com today. That's F-R-O-N-T-S-I-G-H-T dot com. Go to FrontSight.com for your training and free gun. All right, folks, we are back. It's the Alex Jones Show. I'm Jason Burma sitting here with Peter Dale Scott. He's going to remain with us for a few more moments, and then we're going to start taking your calls. Uh, going over some of the mainstream news here that, again, foreign mercenary forces are in the United States under the guise of American police force. It's not American. It's not a police force. But we were just talking uh, a little bit about COG and how that kind of intertwines into this government drug dealing. And we talked about Iran-Contra over the break. Why don't you tell people, you know, about Oliver North's revelations about continuity of government during Iran-Contra? Right. You know... Almost all that we know about continuity of government is actually be, goes back to the e era when Congress, uh, there was a congressional committee on Iran Contra and Oliver North was a witness. And a very good uh, journalist, Al Alonzo Chardy, wrote for the Miami, uh, um, where, Miami, one Herald? Yes, for the Miami Herald, an article where he described it in some detail as a plan for the suspension of the Constitution. And Congressman Jack Brooks from Texas um, was on the committee, and he asked Oliver North on camera, on television, is it true that you have been working on plans to suspend the American Constitution? And the most amazing thing happened. The, the chairman of the committee, who was a Democrat, Senator Inouye, banged his gavel and said, oh, we can't go into that in an open session. We have to go into that in a secret session, thereby telling us all, in effect, that there was something there that was so sensitive that it, the American people couldn't hear about it. And uh, and it was amazing that the New York Times had run, printed every word of the hearings, and they printed that exchange. But they did a news story about what happened that day and didn't mention <laughs> that Oliver North, I mean, the, the, the idea that Oliver North was doing something about suspending the American Constitution was not in the news story or any other mainstream media news story. That's where I really became, for the first time, aware of the increasing gap between what's going on at a deeper level. I call Iran-Contra a deep event, the Kennedy assassination a deep event, 9-11 a deep event. We're just getting used to the fact that every now and then something happens that we're not going to get to the bottom of and what we have to be aware of is, accumulatively, these deep events are doing more to shape where the country is going than uh, all the public debate that goes on in Congress. And that's particularly true of 
it's it, we still haven't got to the bottom of it. Even the uh, the chairman of it have had admitted that they didn't get proper intel, uh, information from the CIA. Louis Free, who was head of the FBI at the time, has said uh, that is perfectly understandable that people would want a, a new investigation. Um, and yet, you, we're not going to get a new investigation because it's a deep event. But the most important constitutional event of this century to date has been the passing of COG on the morning of September the 11th, 2001. And it's, it's barely reported anywhere. The 9-11 report says, yes, it happened, but we decided not to look into COG. They, they admit in their report that it did happen and that they didn't investigate it. It is shocking. Some other things that they've said, you know, uh, Lee Hamilton and Thomas Keene did a book without precedent where they admitted that, you know, NORAD and the FAA just lied to them and they said it was so far from the truth. We don't know why they said what they did. Um, I was actually one of the first people to get the NORAD tapes, uh, which had been vetted, but, you know, the first person to go through 30-plus hours of audio over, I think it was 21 separate channels. And you listen to these things, and they're talking about drills going on. In fact, you know, in the movie Fabled Enemies, I go over it. They had to call in to Cheyenne Mountain 20 minutes after Flight 93 had been downed and ask them to take the inputs out of their screens, out of radar, because they were getting even more hijacked. Oh, my God. Yeah, and, yes. you know, and I, I play the audio for you with them frantically frantically calling into Cheyenne Mountain, telling them to take the inputs off. And publicly, we know they were following Delta 1989, which supposedly had a bomb on board. They were uh, following a Korean Airlines plane out of Alaska oh, coming in. I know in. about that one because it came down in Canada. Yes, that's right. It yeah. did come down in Canada before right. it was able to so, reach. You know, you read over and over and over that not a single plane was brought down. One plane was forced <laughs> down. It was forced down by the Canadians who were not clued into whatever was happening. Well, if you go and you check the FBI's initial, I believe it's uh, T. Team 8 or Team 7, uh, they've now released some documents where they admit they, and they give you the tail numbers of not only the four hijacked planes, but four more that they thought were hijacked on the right. morning of 9-11. So we, we are so far from the truth on that very, very deep event, and it does warrant a new investigation, and I'm hoping that the people over at NYC can are able to, uh, you know, win, Amen. win their Supreme Court decision. Just getting it to the Supreme Court is almost a victory, and, yeah. you know, shining the light in the dark Darkness, and that's what you've been able to do so well. You know, we're going to let you go because we've got an extensive interview to do later on for my upcoming film, Invisible Empire. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Jason. It was a great pleasure to actually see you, uh, just talk to you. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much.